It is impossible to talk about the creation of Dragon Ball without mentioning Kazuhiko Torishima and the role that he played in aiding Akira Toriyama to creating the world-famous Dragon Ball manga. Torishima, aged 25 in 1977, was one of the youngest employees of Shueisha. He initially wanted to work for Playboy magazine, which is published by Shueisha in Japan. However, he found himself working for weekly Shonen Jump magazine, which publishes manga targeted towards young boys. He was employed as a manga editor, overseeing the publication of manga series and looking after the well-being of the manga authors under his supervision. Each month, Jump Magazine would receive work that was sent in from young aspiring manga authors. A chosen editor would be tasked to choose a young aspiring author to train and develop for that particular month. On the month where it fell upon Kazuhiko Torishima to choose an aspiring manga author, Akira Toriyama had applied to Jump Magazine. 100 to 150 aspiring manga authors had submitted their works to be reviewed. Torishima, being the youngest editor at the time, began to read all the manga submissions that were sent in, and out of all of the works submitted, Toriyama's work resonated with Torishima the most. Due to how clean his work looked, he stated that mostly young authors often correct their work a lot, however, Toriyama's work did not show any signs of having been corrected. Torishima also believed that the choices that Toriyama made when it came to drawing were visually beautiful, and his content was actually funny to read. However, Toriyama's work did not receive recognition from any of the other editors at the time. Torishima saw the potential of this aspiring young author, and this ultimately led to Torishima deciding to take Toriyama under his wing to develop his skills. Torishima sent a telegram to the city of Nagoya, where Toriyama resides. The telegram read, You have talent. Call me fast. Signed, Torishima. Toriyama and Torishima had been working together for 18 months before Toriyama drew the first draft of Dr. Slump which is Toriyama's first weekly serialized manga. But before this, Toriyama had drawn over 500 pages of manga, which were declined by Torishima. Toriyama would present Torishima with many ideas, which would end up being declined. This process ultimately helped to improve the quality of Toriyama's work. And this showed when Toriyama's first manga, Dr. Slump, debuted ranking in at second in the weekly Shonen Jump reader polls, Torishima had persuaded Toriyama to use Arale, a girl character, as the protagonist of his manga. This was initially considered unusual by Toriyama, to have a girl as a protagonist of a manga which was published in a magazine targeted towards boys. Despite Toriyama's initial apprehension, Dr. Slump proved to be a huge success, but it had come to a point when Toriyama had grown tired of drawing the manga. He found himself losing interest in drawing a manga which had a self-contained story for each chapter that concluded at the end of that weekly installment. Also, having to come up with a new comedic story each week proved to be quite a burden for Toriyama. However, it was impossible for Dr. Slump to just stop, as it was one of the highest ranking manga being published in Weekly Jump magazine. The chief editor of Jump at the time had told Torishima that if Toriyama wanted to end Dr. Slump, he would have to come up with something which was more interesting and more successful than Dr. Slump, and only on that condition could he end the manga. So both Toriyama and Torishima got to work, planning a new manga which would surpass the previous work. Firstly, they restructured the workflow of Dr. Slump. Each new chapter had to be completed within five days instead of seven, which left them with two days to work on this new project. During those two days each week, they met many times. However, they underestimated how difficult the task would be. They were expecting to come up with something in a relatively short period of time, but they couldn't come up with an idea that would be as successful as Dr. Slump. Lots of ideas were scrapped. Despite Toriyama being a successful manga author and Torishima being a proven manga editor, the task was proving to be too difficult. Eventually, after much deliberation, Torishima decided to hold one final meeting regarding this new project. He left for Nagoya to meet Toriyama. And just like every other week, they still could not come up with something. He had in fact stayed there until the final train back to Tokyo. Exhausted and tired of this new project, he eventually decided to head back. Before Torishima left Toriyama's office, his wife, who was also a manga author, had made them tea, and she began to talk about her husband and how he was weird and unique. It's quite common for manga authors to listen to the radio or music as they draw, due to their ears not being preoccupied with the task of drawing. However, Toriyama didn't do this. He would watch movies and TV that he had recorded during his work. Torishima questioned her and asked how it was possible to concentrate on the TV and draw at the same time. To which Toriyama's wife had replied, he didn't watch the movies, but you could tell what was happening. And if it was at an interesting part, he would lift up his head and watch it. So, Torishima asked Toriyama what he watched as he drew manga and Toriyama replied he mostly watched Jackie Chan Kung Fu movies. Torishima asked, well, if you like Kung Fu movies so much, then why don't you draw a Kung Fu manga for the next project? So, reluctantly, Toriyama came up with a short 13-page story called Dragon Boy. 
Part 1 of Dragon Boy was published in June 1983. It followed the adventures of a boy called Tang Tong, who lived in the mountains. His master has tasked him to return a princess to her homeland. Part 2 of Dragon Boy was published in September 1983. After the success of Dragon Boy, Toriyama had decided to do a kung fu manga, which would be called Dragon Ball. The early draft work of Dragon Ball had many elements from Journey to the West incorporated into it. The story of Journey to the West was in the public domain for many, many years, and it was free intellectual property due to being such an old piece of work. One of the other main reasons that Dragon Ball borrowed from Journey to the West was that it was planned to be a long-running manga series with a continual story, rather than the episodic nature of Dr. Slump. When converting the short story of Dragon Boy into a long-running series called Dragon Ball, ideas from Journey to the West like characters and Goku's power pole and the Nimbus Cloud were incorporated into the initial concept designs for Dragon Ball. Journey to the West, originating from China, was set in China, and Torishima believed that having a setting similar to China would help the manga to stand out by being unique and fresh. The Eastern setting would be the opposite of Dr. Slump's Western setting, and also instead of the protagonist being a girl, Arale from Dr. Slump. The protagonist for Toriyama's new work is a boy called Son Goku. Toriyama initially wanted to be faithful to the story of Journey to the West, so he designed the characters faithfully to the original work. The initial design of Son Goku had just been of the Monkey King from Journey to the West, but Toroshima rejected these designs. He stated that for a boy's manga, it is important to make sure that the readers feel connected to the main character. Torishima emphasised the importance of having a strong emotional connection. The readers must be able to lose themselves into the manga and see themselves as the protagonist. Now if the main character of Dragon Ball was a monkey, then nobody would be able to relate to this. So after another design change due to Torishima stating that the new designs were too plain, the final character designs for Dragon Ball had been decided. Yamcha, Kwa and Ulong were also designed at this stage, along with Goku and Bulma. Goku had been aged 11 and Bulma aged 14 to 15. And it was at this point that Toriyama had decided to incorporate the idea of having shining orbs. When brought together, they summon a legendary dragon, which would grant one wish before leaving and the shining orbs scattering across the globe once again. So one of the main story elements had been created, the journey to gather the Dragon Balls. Knowing this, Toriyama could create a story around this premise. When Dragon Ball had began being serialised in Weekly Jump magazine, the story followed Goku and Bulma on a journey to collect the Dragon Balls, along with making friends during their journey, based on the Journey to the West story. However, the ratings for the manga in Weekly Jump magazine began dropping. Torishima discussed with Toriyama why the story was not resonating with this demographic. The two of them concluded that Goku was not a strong enough protagonist, and as a result, he wasn't resonating with the readers. So from this point on in the story, it was decided that Goku is driven by continuing to get stronger and stronger. With this change in direction, additional characters like Master Roshi and Krillin were created to help and support Goku to become stronger. Forgetting all of the previous characters, the story changed its focus to the three characters of Master Roshi, Krillin and Goku. The chapters of Dragon Ball now told the story of Goku's training and his pursuit to becoming stronger. These changes proved to be successful as the reader rankings responded favourably with this change in new story direction. But despite this change in direction and story, Toroshima believed that Dragon Ball was not a strong manga. Eventually, after a few meetings with Toriyama, they had decided that the series had been missing a good villain. Toroshima suggested that they needed to come up with someone really evil who gives Goku motivation to defeat him. So Toriyama was tasked to create a strong villain to make Goku appeal more to readers. To help Toriyama, Toroshima introduced him to the most evil people from global history. After he had introduced him to about 10 people, they eventually got to Emperor Nero. The Roman Emperor took a great deal of pleasure in the suffering of others. Toriyama felt like he could design around this characteristic. So from this, the Demon King Piccolo was created. Toroshima had stated that this was the beginning of the future of Dragon Ball, and also the start of the inclusion of more sci-fi or alien elements into the series. When Toroshima had initially suggested to Toriyama to draw a Kung Fu manga, Toriyama had told him, the things I like and the things I want to draw are two different things, so I don't want to. But thanks to the persuasion of Torishima, the world would go on to enjoy Dragon Ball for over 34 years as of 2018. Just before the start of the Saiyan Saga, Torishima had been rotated and assigned to oversee another manga, which is a common practice in Jump Magazine, as editors are rotated to supervise another manga author after so many years of being with the same one. Dragon Ball would continue to have two further editors after Torishima but none would impact the series like Torishima did. The input and knowledge of Torishima, combined with the talent and artistic skill of Toriyama, created the billion dollar multimedia franchise, Dragon Ball, which is now loved all across the globe. 